Hi guys, this, my name is Bren Klein. And I'm Carlos Mercado. And we're here today to show you, uh, to illustrate why we would need an attenuator uh, with your Pico scope and uh, what circuits you might consider using it on. Uh, we look forward to shooting this video and we hope you benefit from it. And if you have any questions or concerns or, you know, uh, we, we uh, encourage you to comment. So, because uh, half of the benefits of these videos is the comments you guys put on afterwards. Thank you very much uh, for coming along. We look forward to it. Hello everybody. My name is Bren Klein. We've got Carlos Mercado standing uh, here helping us shoot this video today. Uh, in my last video I talked about the Pico Scope uh, setting up your setting up and saving your user startup settings. Uh, and when during that video we talked about the 20 to 1 attenuator, you know, when we were talking about the different probes that are in the built-in library within the software, one of the things we talked about was the 20, 20 to 1 attenuator. And we discussed kind of what we might use that uh, attenuator on, uh, but we wanted to show a live portion to kind of back that up. So this video is basically to illustrate, uh, again, why you would use the 20 to 1 attenuator and uh, we're going to go ahead and capture uh, a primary ignition waveform today from a 2005 Lincoln Town Car with a 4.6 liter engine. So, uh, just to kind of uh, just to kind of go back over it real quick, uh, this is what a 20 to 1 attenuator looks like. The point of the tw the, the attenuators is to basically protect your scope for any if you're me taking any, me any measurements from a circuit that's capable of producing more than 100 volts, in this case, this is a maximum 100 volt input for this Pico scope. Uh, this is a 4423. The latest generation Pico scope is a 4425, and it has a 200 volt maximum input. Uh, and just ha so happens that the 10 to 1 attenuators come with that one, where this being the 100 volt maximum input comes with a 20 to 1 attenuator. And so. It's a typical BNC connection, and it just goes in line with your lead. So you'd put the 20 to 1 attenuator on, and then your test lead on. So a couple other examples of some circuits that you might need, obviously one being a primary ignition waveform. And the reason being is it, uh, primary ignition, the inductive kit that takes place in that uh, ignition event uh, rises well above 100 volts. So you would definitely need it in that. Another quick uh, uh, common example is uh, even port fuel injections. The inductive kicks on those as well will exceed 100 volts at times and then you know in direct injection uh, injectors uh, do as well. So um, those are some uh, common examples of why you would need a t uh, attenuators to use attenuators to protect your scope. So when we do choose the t uh, 20 to 1 attenuator, we have to make sure that the software knows that you put it in there. So it can, uh, you know, it reduces the actual live voltage uh, by 20 times, but you have to let the so Pico software know that you've u you're using that so that it basically multiplies it back up 20 times. So we'll show, we'll go ahead and show you again where to choose that setting. Hit record. So right here we, we have, if you right click you'll see we have all channels but A off because we're only going to get the primary ignition on channel A today. And right here under probe, uh, you know, in the built-in uh, choices here you have times 1, times 10, and times 20. So we're going to choose the times 20 because we're using the 20 to 1 attenuator. And I like to use plus or minus 400 because I find that uh, primary ignition uh, exceeds some of the lower settings uh, a lot, uh, more often than not. And then I'll take the voltage scale and I'll run it down here to about two lines above uh, the bottom. Uh, that way you can see, the, you know, when it, you can see something that might take place below the bottom, uh, but you can also see, you know, uh, the primary waveform above zero, of course. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the actual connections that we're going to make on this vehicle. Now, with uh, primary voltage or primary ignition, you need to 
on certain cars you're not going to be able to get it. Now, most modern cars have coil on plugs these days, uh, so we're going to talk about those uh, for the most part. With coil on plugs, you have two wire coils and you have three and four wire coils. The two wire coils, the transistor for that ignition is not built into the coil, so you can get a primary ignition on that. You know, you can. Uh, get a primary ignition waveform on that vehicle. If you have three and four wire coils, the transistor is built into the coil, so you're not going to be able to get primary ignition. You're going to be, you're going to have to get a secondary ignition pattern from that. So we'll focus in on the connection here. So these are two wire coils, so we're going to be able to get our primary ignition waveform here. Now, uh, one good rule of thumb is. You know, usually when you have a two-wire coil, all of your coils are going to have a similar colored um, wire for the power. All the triggered wires are going to be different colors. And if you zoom in, Carlos, real close here, you'll see that this one has a red and like a green with a white tracer. And the very next one here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the very next one has a red wire but it has like a pink wire and the pink wire in that case would be the trigger and over here the green wire with the white tracer is our trigger and of course you're gonna go ahead and ground your lead now one thing I, I wanted to talk about too uh, if you're using a 4423 or any automotive picoscope uh, prior to that generation you only want to ground one of the channels you don't want to ground more than one channel. Um, the ground in the Pico box are shared basically. They're not isolated on those generation Pico scopes. The newest generation Pico scope, automotive Pico scope, the four channel and the two channel, uh, but we'll talk about the four channels, the 4425, um, that one has isolated ground so you would need to ground each uh, of your channels or each of your leads when you're get, uh, acquiring you know, waveforms. So we're going to go ahead and start the car and get our waveform. So you see the signal is moving around, and that's because we have the time base. You know, we talked about the time base before. Usually we have the time base uh, ramped up quite a bit, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to show you, you know, I'm going to zoom in or reduce the time base on it so we can see, you know, the waveform that like most of you guys are not used to seeing it. But obviously you're not able to focus in, it's moving around a lot. And in this case, we're going to need a trigger. Uh, so we're right here at the bottom left here is the trigger tools. And uh, for this case, we're going to use repeat. And by putting that trigger up there, you can see that waveform is now displayed nicely in the center. Down here at the, the tools again, just, I'll briefly kind of cover some of the trigger options. This one here is the trigger is going to be on the rising edge. This button here is if you want the trigger on the falling edge, and we'll show the difference. You see there, uh, with it being on the falling edge, it's going to focus in at the point to where the waveform falls. You put it on the rising edge, it's, it's focusing on the point where the waveform rises. Uh, with primary ignition, I like to get the rising edge, and I like to get it, you know, up high enough to where I make sure I'm getting the, the ignition and it's not missing it. If you put it up high enough, you know, you see it's not running live. It's because it's not always meeting the criteria for that trigger. So I bring the trigger down to where, right there so I can make sure to see it. Some of you, most of you are probably familiar with the, um, with the multi-strike system Ford has. So at idle, they'll have what they call a multi-strike, it'll strike, you know, it'll basically have three ignition events. Uh, once you rise the RPM up above idle, you'll see a more uh, traditional style single uh, ignition event take place. So, that is our video, and uh, I appreciate you coming along with us. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, please, we encourage you to, to comment and, and uh, ask questions or... You know, maybe 
we miss something or mess something up, please uh, don't don't hesitate to call us out on it. We're here. We're all in this together. We're here to learn. Thank you for coming along.